hair is like bushing out over my ears. That is not good. All right, today is a not like exciting day, not important day. It's just a day that kind of like is gonna mark the start of a project that I've had in mind for a little bit. So basically with where I'm at, there's no archery range near me, um, at least any like good ones. There's one rundown one that's managed by Game and Parks. Um, but I mean like in comparison with other ranges, it's not super good. Um, so I had an idea that basically over the next like six or seven months, I'm gonna build up my own range. Now that's gonna include 3D targets mainly because just, you know, the concept of shooting at 3D targets is really good for practice. It's more of like a, a hunting type target shooting rather than just shooting at paper. And at the end of the day, I target shoot to get better at hunting. So that's why I really wanna mainly focus on. Um, but the one thing that I really need or really want for my range is a bigger like bale style target that I can shoot at from long distances, you know, being able to practice out to 80, 90, 100 plus yards. Now, that's great and all, and they have bale targets available, um, but if you've ever seen one of those, they're very expensive. Um, you're pushing three, $400 for a bale target. It's just not, you know, you, you could buy it. I just really don't want to spend that much money, especially when I'm prioritizing buying 3D targets. So today we're gonna go through, um, I'll kind of give a, a brief rundown of the range. Uh, probably not, because there's like four targets up there right now, but we're gonna build a homemade bale target. And the great part about it is that you can, obviously like if you get your own foam, everything, you can build pretty much the same thing that a lot of companies make, but you're still spending, you know, $150, $250. All of this stuff that I got today was under $90. Uh, it's two by fours and then a little bit of plywood and pretty much free material from that point. It's really gonna be super easy. I'll take you guys out. We're at the cabin right now. Um, so I'm gonna take you guys out to the barn and we'll do a, a full run through of it. And one thing I guess before I get into the tools in this, all of this can be done with a hammer and nails when it really comes down to it. Um, depends on you know how neat you want it to look how much time you want to take on it but yeah um, especially for you know people who might not have access to tools um, you know younger guys just getting out don't really have their own tool set um, I get it it's it definitely can be intimidating trying to do any sort of projects um, when you just don't have the tools accumulated over time that you've bought here and there um, you know I'm fortunate enough to have an uh, access to a pretty good amount of tools so I'm gonna be using them um, but yeah bear in mind you could do all of this with a hammer and nails if you really wanted to um, but as far as the tools that we are using all you're really gonna need that's important is gonna be spray paint um, to paint on the dots or paint on the shapes or basically anything you're gonna be aiming at on the target um, with that as well same sort of screws and then I would recommend getting a stapler gun. Uh, main reason being when you are just stapling the target face to um, the actual target, it's just easier with staplers. You know, um, nails are a pretty small contact point, so you're gonna have a better chance of rip out and stuff. Having a staple that's gonna be keeping it on there, just gonna be ideal. Uh, now, as far as the actual materials that this is gonna be using and where the, the actual affordability of the target comes into play, all you're gonna need, I just went down to my local Menards and got this stuff. So eight two by fours, um, they're the ones that came just the straight two by four by four foot. Um, I cut them down so I have four of them at actually 48 inches because they come you know, a little bit longer, some of them a little bit shorter. And then I have four of them cut to 45 inches. Those are gonna be the, the interior boards on the frame. So that way you're gonna have a perfect four foot square. Um, other than that, four sheets of just utility plywood. I think those guys came in at like $15 from Menards. Um, so really not that much. The two by fours, if I didn't mention it, were like $1.90. Um, so, so what, let's say $2 a board, um, you're at $16, let's say $16 for the plywood, you're at 64 bucks. Um, so, I mean, yeah, you're at $80 right there. And then the final thing that you're actually gonna be using for the actual target face of the target 
is it's just gonna be some weed control landscape fabric. Uh, this is four feet by 80 feet. Now, I actually got the idea to use that from a whitetail fit video um, of him repairing a big bale target. Um, I was originally gonna get one of those just advertisement like vinyl banners. Um, you know, you can go around to businesses who had those and they're out of season for the promotions and stuff. They just throw them away. Um, so you can be a little bit resourceful to get your hands on one of those, but this shouldn't be super bad. I'm just gonna double layer and triple layer some of the fabric on top of each other so it holds it a little bit better. And then I said that's the last thing, that's really the last thing that you need to buy. Um, the final thing that you're actually gonna be using for the, the insides of the target and the thing that's gonna be stopping the arrows. So if you go to Menards, um, all the pallet wrap, the plastic shrink wrap that they use, they all recycle that. Um, so there is a room in the back where they just have it all stored up. They're waiting for a truck to come by and pick it up. Um, I went back there and asked them if I could borrow some and they said yes. Um, you definitely are gonna get a couple funny looks. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, if a homeless dude came in and was asking for copper wire, um, I'm sure they weren't really sure what I was up to asking for it. But long story short, they gave it to me totally for free. And with that, you end up with something that looks like that. So might have gone a little bit overboard on it. Um, I have pretty much a full bed load. Um, so I, I don't think that I'm going to be using all of it. You do want to pack it in pretty tight, though. Even still, I don't think I'm going to be using all of it today. So once that target Whoa. So once that target gets shot up, um, arrows start to pass through a little bit more. The great thing is I'm just gonna put one of these plywood panels on so I can just unscrew it, take it off the top, and then put more plastic stuffing in there and you're good to go. So you can pretty much repair that target super easy. You don't have to get new foam for it. You don't have to get a whole new target, get a new bag cover. Um, it's gonna be pretty much an, an infinite use target. Um, but let's get to building it. I'm gonna start off by building the frames just basically two squares and then I'm gonna put the paneling around it and we'll be good to go. All right, so now we got the frames built. We're gonna go ahead and put the paneling around it and I enclose it so it's a fully contained square. I'm gonna leave the top uh, open so that way we're still able to put the, the plastic wrap inside of it. Uh, but yeah, putting three of the panels on there and then we'll be good to go. So now that we have the paneling on the side, um, I'm gonna go ahead and take the landscaping fabric and wrap it around a couple times, um, basically building up that target face. So if you put one arrow through it, since it's not just one layer, it's not gonna rip apart and start to open up really fast. Um, it's gonna have a little bit of rigidity to it, and especially when you're cramming that plastic in there, it's gonna be able to hold up a little bit. So gonna go ahead and get that knocked out, and we'll go from there. All right, so I got the wrap on um, and like fully enclosed. So now we're gonna go through and I'm gonna stuff it all with plastic and then it's really gonna be good to roll from there. We'll paint on target faces and we'll be set to go. All right, so one thing that I kind of saw with targets similar to this, like homemade targets that use um, shrink wrap filling, um, is that you really cannot overpack, um, and you're gonna need a lot of it. So you guys saw I had a full bed load. It's, I mean, completely emptied out now um, of that plastic wrap, and I mean, it is barely, barely over like three quarters of the way filled. So 
definitely takes up a lot of space. Um, I'm gonna need to probably run into town and get some more from just the local Menards. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead, throw the topper on here that I'm gonna use and at least put it out and kind of test it out, put an arrow through it and see if it stops it. But yeah, it's crazy. Um, really, there's, there's no end to how much plastic you can put in this thing. All right, excuse the airboat in the background, but it's a little bit later in the day. Um, Ran into town, took about an hour or two. I went to get some lunch and some more shrink wrap. I got about a half bed full um, after a full bed and I still have room. Um, so that goes to show that you really cannot put enough shrink wrap in this thing. Um, so when you think you have enough, you don't do get more. Um, that is why the top of this, I'm gonna make pretty easy to get off. Um, I'm just gonna kind of tape it down and spray paint over it just to make it look nice. And then next time when I come back with the final amount of shrink wrap, fingers crossed, um, then I'll actually nail it down. And when I want to get the board off down the line, when I need to replace it, um, then I'll pull the nails and we'll be good to go from there. Um, but until then, I'm going to go ahead and just put a little dot on the bottom here. Now, for the most part, I'm going to use this target to put up target faces. Um, so like three spots, one spots. Um, really anything like that but I'm just gonna spray paint a little white dot on here just so we can see how good it stops arrows and then we'll be good to go we'll throw a couple arrows inside of it now I did put the dot pretty low um, like I said I don't have a whole lot of shrink wrap in here so down low is where it's really packed in um, up top it's still pretty pretty loose so if we're gonna stop an arrow, our best chance is gonna be down at the bottom here. Um, but I'm gonna go pull the truck around and then we'll be good. I'll throw a couple of arrows at it. All right, so I'm back at kind of like my starting point that I've set up for the range. Um, targets over my shoulder there. Um, I don't know how far it's gonna be from here. So pretty much this setup is gonna be like the main if I'm just looking to be able to get shots at all the targets that I'm gonna lay on the range. Um, it's going to be probably not farther than like 45, 50 yards. Um, there is a spot that I can line up behind the barn where I can get a straight shot onto this big target at probably closer to that 90, 100 yards. Um, and if not, I can always move it, uh, move it back, change spots with it, anything like that. But right now where it is, I'm ranging it out at 51 yards. So. We're gonna go ahead, take a couple shots at it, um, kind of get the, the moment of truth of if those arrows are gonna stop or if I'm really, really gonna have to pack more plastic wrap in. So we'll see how it goes. Alrighty, well, it's been probably nine, 12 arrows through this thing. Um, it's holding up still. I mean, they obviously aren't all hitting in the same spot over and over again. Really kind of the, the long-term wear and tear is gonna be the thing that's gonna make or break a target. Um, but in all honesty, once you pack in a lot more plastic wrap, it really should be totally fine. Um, I'm not expecting it to have a lot of wear on it. I'm not expecting it to wear down a ton. And if it does, the best thing about it is that you're always just able to get more of that landscaping fabric. Just lay it over again, do another layer. You don't even have to really wrap it a whole lot. You can just staple on one layer just to kind of replace the face on it. Um, and you're, you're good to go. So in all honesty, um, you could go out and buy like a $300 bale target. Obviously with that, you're able to shoot broadheads at it. Um, and you know, there's, there's a little bit different technology that goes into it, but for my uses, for, for what I'm really going to use this big of a target for, just shooting at long distance, um, you know, putting up three spot targets and having multiple people shooting at it at once. Um, I honestly have no problems with this. I think it's going to be a really great option. And at the end of the day, I really like just kind of doing stuff. So it's a fun project to put together um, and it's, it's very cheap. You could do like two or three of these if you want to have a big range and kind of stagger them out. Or you could just have one and put it in your backyard, really put it anywhere. Um, but yeah, that's really it for the video today. Just kind of wanted to make a quickie um, and kind of just fling some arrows down range and get some good content rolling. Um, speaking of that, there is going to be more on the way. I'm going to do a lot more stuff in the actual bow shop um, with it being springtime, summertime. 
Not really a big turkey hunter, so I don't know if I'm gonna be doing that, um, but a lot more stuff as far as setting up for hunting season. Um, you know, every year I think you should try to have the best hunting season of your life, so this next year I'm gonna try to have the best hunting season yet. Um, it's gonna be a really fun one, get some fun trips planned, get some fun hunts planned, um, and I can't wait to get that filming, but there's still a lot of time before that. It's only May, um, so definitely got a lot of tinkering to do, got a lot of setting up to do, so we'll just kind of see how it rolls. But until then, guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. You guys have a good one now. Bye-bye.